You're welcome to go and do that as well, but the annual meeting will happen right here in this room, right after worship ends. Uh, so just please note that. Also note that Lent is beginning uh, here very soon on February 14th with our Ash Wednesday worship services. We have two services, one at noon and one at 6.30 p.m. They're basically exactly the same. And then we have a meal at 5.30 p.m. Um, on Ash Wednesday. It's a baked potato bar, and we invite you to join us for that. And then we have our Lent worship every Wednesday following till Easter, and you'll see that scheduled um, in your bulletin. Also, not in your bulletin, but something that we're looking for um, is we're looking for some substitute crossing guards, especially to help in the afternoons. And one of the reasons for this is sometimes I have conflicts in the afternoons, like crew, or in April and May, like I have to like travel to go ump games. And so we're looking for some help to maybe fill a couple afternoons. Um, it's an hour, but the average time uh, of you being out of your vehicle to stand in weather is about 20 minutes or so. Um, and it's a great way to uh, help out in the community and get to know some of our kids. If you're willing to help, um, uh, uh, let me know. We supply all the training. Uh, and I'm not a bad trainer, am I, Mary? I trained you. You're good. All right, you did okay. Um, and so, uh, if you're willing, let me uh, let me know. We'd love to have a couple on uh, on the docket for when we need um, need some help. So uh, talk to me if you are interested in helping out in the community as a crossing guard. Um, all right, I will leave the rest of the announcements to you. Everything is in the red hymnal, which should be in front of you. And I invite you to turn to page 95. And please stand for our brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please note we'll be on the right side of page 95. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit that we live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Gather Us In, in number 532, in your red hymnal 532.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. May us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Before we continue with the scripture readings, uh, today is the uh, last day for one of our council members who ends um, after being on council for six years. So, Mr. Robert Bird, if you come on forward, please. Come on, Bob. Come on. He told me he wasn't going to come, but he has no choice. Let's give a round of applause for Mr. Bird. is this. First, um, there was no doubt that a meeting would start late because Bob was telling some sort of story in the fellowship hall and we'd have to try to get him from stopping to tell the story so he could come to the meeting. But also what's most remarkable is this is Bob's second set of full terms. He did one set of six years, took a few years off and came back and did another set of six years, which shows his dedication to the ministry of this church. He has brought an immense wisdom and gifts and talents um, as a big reason uh, why uh, this church continues uh, to be full of ministry and life. And we give thanks for his service. And so what I'd like to do is like to give thanks and prayer for Bob, and then we have a certificate of appreciation and one more, maybe even bigger round of applause. All right? So, not yet, not yet. Wait, wait, wait. After the prayer. All right, let us pray. Good and loving God, we give thanks for Bob's service to Trinity on church council, for all that he brought, for his gifts, his tireless service, for his dedication to this ministry. We give thanks for his faith and for his love for you. Continue to bless him and be with him as he serves this congregation in new ways and guide him in all that he does. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's begin and let's figure out the clock. Thank you, Bob. And I have no doubt I will pay for that Wednesday morning during band practice. We continue with our scripture readings.
Our gospel comes from the first chapter of Mark, beginning with the 29th verse. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so they may proclaim the message there also. And that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for children's church.
It's also a little creepy when Pastor Brad puts on evil Halloween horror movie music. It gets extra creepy. But what's the purpose? I'm going to play hide and seek, everybody. What's the, somebody's playing hide and seek in case somebody's never played it before. How do you play it? Yeah, how do you play and seek? Oh, so you have a seeker, and everybody else hides, and they try to find you, right? That's, and the point is to try to stay as hidden as long as you can. All right? Well, in our gospel reading today, we have a little bit of hide and seek going on, but the difference is there's one person kind of hiding, and everybody else is seeking them. Does anybody know a person that's kind of hiding from the reading? Yeah. Oh, not sure. All right. This one day we no problem. Anybody know who's hiding in our reading? Can anybody take a guess? Yeah. Logan? No, Logan is not hiding. He was not in our scripture reading. I'm going to give you a clue. This person's name starts with a J. Yeah. Jesus. That's right, Charlotte. Jesus. Jesus is hiding. He goes out to pray. And all of a sudden, his companions are looking for him. It uses a very interesting word. It says they were hunting for him. They wanted to find Jesus. Right? They were worried about him. They thought that he was lost. He just was out praying. But sometimes in life, we search for Jesus. We want to find Jesus. Well, here's the thing. Jesus isn't lost to us. We can find Jesus in all sorts of places and all sorts of ways. Does anybody have any ideas of places where we could find Jesus? Yeah, Paxton, what do you think? Sure, why not? Of course you can find Jesus at the pizza shop. Of course, why not? <laughs> what? A cookie shop. Of course, why not? In heaven, of course, we find Jesus in heaven. Where are some other places we might find Jesus? We might find Jesus here in the church. Is that what you were going to say? down there? We might find Jesus at home. We might find Jesus in the Bible. And today we have a very special thing in which we call we have First Communion. And we are going to find Jesus. We're going to find Jesus in the bread and wine of communion as well. See, the thing is, Jesus is all around us and is with us every day. And we need to find Jesus because sometimes there are days in which we're really sad or we're hurting. There are days in which we're comforting, that we need some comfort. But also days in which we're really happy, in which we're celebrating, and we want to celebrate with Jesus. We never have to worry about finding Jesus, because Jesus is with us every day. Jesus is with you every day, whether you're in church, at home, at the pizza shop, at the cookie shop, at school, wherever. Jesus is everywhere. Because Jesus goes wherever you go. And Jesus reminds you, wherever you go, that you're in love and that Jesus will be with you always. All right, let us pray. Good and loving God, we give thanks that your son Jesus Christ is with us every day. Help us to see him wherever we go, and most especially to see him in church and the readings from the Bible when we take the sacrament of Holy Communion and when we're with each other. Remind us that you love us always. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, it's two pieces of candy, one to share, one for yourself, and a high five. Thanks for coming up.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I gotta tell you, I had a great week this week. I can't tell you what awesome week. I had no evening activities this week besides the normal Wednesday night stuff. Nothing on Monday, nothing on Tuesday, nothing on Thursday, nothing on Friday. No meetings, no nothing. I did not home every night. It was crazy. And Amy is already happy that this next week, I'm not home one single night. Sick of me. All right? I got to spend time with colleagues at a conference. I got to have band practice with my favorite, my favorite boys, even though they make fun of me for like two hours straight. It was awesome. I we have a first communion today. I love having the kid first time I get to give communion to some of our youth. Always a super special and important time. And even better, I fulfilled a lifelong goal of golfing in Wisconsin in January on the 31st. It was awesome. Just a great, perfect, awesome week. But I also know that not every week is great and perfect and awesome. Sometimes weeks are tough and hard and awful and terrible and feel like I'm spending every waking moment an hour with Paul Donowski. I mean, just, just slogs, right? He agrees, right? I do the same thing. Because as Paul always says, his favorite thing about me is nothing. <laughs> But it's like we have these weeks, right? Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're really hard. Right? Have you ever gotten to like a Tuesday and you realize it's only Tuesday and you think to yourself, dear God, how am I going to make it to Friday? It's only Tuesday. And I think our scripture reading from Isaiah, which is a reading we often hear at, at ironically, at funerals, is the perfect scripture reading for whether it's been a great week or whether it's been an awful week. Even youths, youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted, exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. Life is a gift. But life is also hard. And sometimes we have incredible great weeks, and sometimes we have difficult weeks. But in the midst of all of that, we have a God who gives us strength. We have a Lord that walks with us and lifts us up. In those great weeks, he's high-fiving us and right there beside us. He was right there with me on, on the green on the last hole on Tuesday when my 30-foot putt trickled right in the hole for a birdie and I didn't dance. <laughs> he was also there the week before as I talked with a member who was going through a health issue and as we cried together, giving strength in that same moment. See, that's the thing about our God is sometimes we forget that God is there in the joyful moments as well as the painful moments. In the painful moments, we often feel so very alone. We feel like nobody understands what we're going through. Nobody understands the pain that we're feeling, the suffering we're going through physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. But our Lord knows our Lord has been in the room with those who have suffered. Our Lord knows what it feels to be betrayed and abandoned and hurt. Our Lord feels the weight of our sins. Because that's why the Lord goes to the cross. But our Lord also knows joy because our Lord has lived on this earth and had friends. And he ate with them and he celebrated with them. Our Lord knows those joys too. And we forget that our Lord is there lifting us up in all of those. Helping us to run when we can. And when we can't. To carry us along the way. Today we celebrate First Communion. And it's this gift of the sacrament is a gift to us that renews our strength every day. That reminds us that Jesus Christ has gone to the cross for us. 
defeating sin, death, and the devil for us. Reminding us that we're never alone. That he's there in the good and the bad. That when we're exhausted, when we don't want to get up in the morning, he's that nudge that gets us up. And also in those days in which we can't wait to get up, we can't wait to start the day, that it's because he's there giving it to us as a gift, this day that we get to live. This Lord is there for you no matter what. No matter where you go, no matter where you turn. I love the answer that some of those kids said. The pizza shop? Perfect. Because we so often think that we can only find Jesus in the trappings of our religion and our faith. But God goes with you every place you go. Every single place that you're at. The Lord is there, whether you realize it or not. And most especially, the Lord is there, giving you strength. And you're sitting at that computer and you're like, oh my God. Seven hours left in the day. It's also there when you're like, ooh, five minutes left in the day and I need to go see my friends. I get to see that long, that good friend I haven't seen in a while and have that time. I get to go home and see my kids or the day that my grandkids are coming over. The Lord is there in every moment of every day, giving you strength, walking with you, lifting you up, saving you, forgiving you, and most especially, loving you. So whether today for you is the greatest day ever, or whether today is a hard day, know this promise. Jesus is here. He's here for you today. He'll be here for you tomorrow. And he'll be here every day till he calls you to that heavenly home that he has won for you through his death and resurrection. <coughs> for that we can say thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please stand and turn to him 798 when you're at the 798.
Christ and turn in your bulletin as we confess our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and Christ Jesus and for all people, according to their need. Holy and gracious God, help us to see that you are with us every day, that you lift us up and walk with us. Surround us by your love always. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we ask that you bless our young people who are receiving their first communion this morning. And bless us as we receive the sacrament, that it might strengthen us in faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, send your healing presence upon all those who need it. Heal those who hurt in body, mind, and spirit. We lift up those we remember in our hearts, those in our prayer list, and those that we don't know. Send your comfort to them, and heal them and be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we know that our ministry happens most often outside of these walls. Bless our ministry partners, and inspire us to carry your gospel of compassion, love, and hope to all we meet, wherever we go, sharing your love with others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, watch over those who so often are victims of violence in any form. Help wars to cease across the globe. Be with those who are stationed in the military and watch over them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we give thanks for the saints who have gone before us and shown us the way. Comfort those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Remind us of the promise of eternal life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, we give thanks for the ministry of this congregation. We give thanks for its members and for all the ministry done within and outside of these walls. Continue to strengthen us as a congregation, that we may continue to proclaim the gospel and serve the neighbor to the best of our ability. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share God's peace with each other, and then we'll have a holiday.
Indian Prince Philip, what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to come forward to receive the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you. Great juice is in the center of the tray, and blue and green bread is available upon the crust. If you wish to not come forward for communion, there is all the one communion that will be available to you in your pew. Just ask the usher who is dismissing the pew. Again, uh, we invite those who are not members of our church to do communion where you go. You're welcome to commune with us. We exit out the side and come up the center and then stand in the front. After you receive your communion, you may go back to your seats. I invite you to follow the instructions of the ushers. You may be seated.
and we should please stand. And now may the God and Father, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you his grace with the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have impressed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift and faith for you. And in further love for one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we see God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor. And give you peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thanks be to God. I would like to be seated as we're going to acknowledge our first communion recipients. So when I call you by name, kids, you're going to come on board. You're going to stand right up here like you did when you received uh, your communion, okay? Now, um, uh, we are missing a kid or two today, um, as they couldn't be here this morning. But whenever they are here, we will still honor them for their first communion. So give us Henry Arnold. Hudson Dackel. Hudson, where are you? Remington Dean. Stay right there. Charlie Gretzlock. Addie Jeske. Breezy Jeske. Maya Knudsen. Maya Middleston. Ellery Pezzel? Ellery? Kendall Crockman. Last but not least. Alright, once you turn and face me for a quick second, we're going to pray. First, alright, hold up, we got to do this, because I wasn't paying attention. Alright, who took wine? Raise your hand. Who took wine? Her took grape juice? Alright. I wish they all could have seen the first time you tried the wine. <laughs> when we tried it last night, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. All right, who's going to do different next time? Everybody's going to be good with your choice? All right, just kind of see it, right? Who wish they had had more bread that I gave you, or wish they had less bread? Who wants more bread? Less bread? It was kind of chunky bread today, so I was trying not to give out a few pieces, so sorry for those that got big pieces. All right, let's pray. Good and loving God, we give thanks for these youth who received their first communion, for this blessed sacrament that celebrates the forgiveness, life, and salvation they have in Jesus Christ. We give thanks that they have held their Savior in their hands, and that this will strengthen them in faith from this day forward every single time they have it. We ask that it will be a blessing in their faith journey from now until the end of time. We ask that you would continue to bless them in their journey of faith as they grow in knowledge, and ask that you bless their parents, grandparents, and family members who witness to them of the love of Jesus Christ. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's turn and face everyone that's here. Let's give a round of applause for our first communion. All right, I'm come on in. Let's do a, uh, let's see, hold on. You get to decide, Kendall. Handshake or high five, what do you think? High five? All right. All right. Good job, everybody. All right, now you take up those cakewalk tickets of yours while Greta brings it forward. What they're all really happy is that they don't have to have wafers for communion. Oh, we have two color tickets. Hey, you know what we're going to do? That's the winner. Jesus decided. Came out of the came out of the container. So, if you have a red ticket, sorry. Blue ticket, six, nine, one, eight, eight, seven. I got it. Oh, that's right here. All right. Now, no share with grandpa. Okay. That's grandpa, yes. Other grandpa, no. That's you, all right? All right? Make sure you have your, your, your sister's first communion, so she should have the first piece, I think. All right? Thank you for supporting our youth, gathering youth. I invite you to please stand as we sing You Are Mine in 581. 